Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I did have a completely different video planned for this week. I had a video that was very high effort and I was really excited for it and I was so pumped to get started and then I woke up on I think Monday, might have been Sunday, I don't remember now, and my sinuses were like, you know what would be really fun? If we just got super duper infected. It's not the bad one, it's, I'm, it's not that, it's just a sinus infection. However, it's been a bit of a week. <laughs> It's been a bit of a silly week. Today's the first day that I have felt like a proper human being again. I think it was like yesterday I woke up with the whole like right side of my face hurting because my sinus like just felt so bad and like stabby. Despite the fact that I've had no energy and no ability to film videos all week, which has been very frustrating, I have been working on Project Teacup. We're now up to chapter 26. I finished chapter 25 yesterday and I am so excited by this progress. I didn't expect to do another day in my life Project Teacup video this soon after the last one, but here we are. You guys are getting a bonus one. Let's go make some tea as always and then we can start writing and I can tell you where I am with the story. We are honestly in such a world of nonsense this week in this house. My headphone broke like early on in this week. I tried to sticky tape it to no avail. It's not working. I need to get new headphones. We'll work that out later. Anyway, I am at my desk. I have my tea. My draft two is open. My voice is already breaking, but we're okay. Um, We're up to chapter 26 and I am furiously excited about it. I think my progress this week has roughly been a chapter and a half or two chapters per day. And as I've mentioned before, my goal with this draft, with draft three, is to get the, the overall story from, I think, 117,000 words, which is what it was at the beginning, down to about 100K. I don't think we're getting to 100K, like, I, which we're not gonna get there. Turns out I wrote this story more concisely than I thought I had. It turns out it wasn't as sloppy as I thought, and there hasn't been as many words words to remove as I initially planned to remove. We're up to chapter 26 of 40, we're up to page 278 of 423, and we are finally down past 110,000 words. We're at 109,905 words, basically what I did yesterday. I was working on chapter 25 and I realized that some of the themes that I was exploring with that chapter, some of like the really integral plot things that happened there were also kind of repeated in a much much later chapter and I was like hmm that's probably going to be really annoying for the reader to have this topic covered here in depthly and then retouched on later because it wasn't done in a way that was like very good it was done in a way that was just kind of repetitious and so I took that whole chapter completely removed it from the story highlighted the bits that I needed shoved it in the earlier chapter and then edited down the whole of chapter 25 and in doing so just removed like 2,000 words from the story straight away and I was like really happy with that because every other chunk of words that's been removed has been like me painstakingly pairing back sentences. Anyway, the story is going really well and that's been the sort of wonderful thing out of this week that I, because I'm so busy with content production stuff all the time, I don't tend to have unbroken writing time but because I physically couldn't do anything else this week, I've just been editing and editing and writing and it's been a really nice sort of unbroken period of working on the draft and I think I really needed it and I feel like we're almost on the home stretch. We're still currently working on chapter 26. The progress has been not slow, but it's not like super fast. It, it's kind of this thing with working on this part of the story and the inconsistencies of each chapter that if a chapter is more polished, it then takes more time for me to edit because I still need to cut out words even if it's polished. And so if the chapter I'm working on is not as polished and it's not as put together and good, it's faster and easier for me to edit, but it probably means that I'm gonna have to go back in chapter four and refine it a 
little bit more. As I said earlier, I've been kind of delighted by how much better <laughs> this draft is than I thought it would be. Like how much better draft two was than I thought it would be because I very much do this thing when I'm writing my first draft or like my early drafts where I give myself permission to write the shit version. And that is, that's been my philosophy ever since I think I was in university because I'm so picky and I'm such a perfectionist with stuff that I sort of find that if I get in my head about how the thing that I'm working on isn't very good and 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 my sentences are sloppy and nothing's well written I won't work on it I get I get really in my head about it and then I find it really hard to make progress but coming back and having a look at it with fresh eyes it's not actually that bad I, I put a caveat on this because I know that in two days time I'm gonna you know have imposter syndrome again Today I feel really good about it, so that's wonderful. I feel really positive about the story today. I feel really well slept. I slept for like 10 hours last night. My headphones are broken and that's annoying me, but we have pizza for lunch, so I'm very happy about that. <coughs> pizza is now microwaving, yay. Is it too dark to film here? It is a very gloomy day today. Pizza! Yay! This is what we're eating for lunch, for the start of lunch. I don't normally eat pizza with a knife and fork, but if I eat this with my hands, I'll get grease all over my camera, and I'm trying to not do that, so that's that's why this is happening. We have ingredients to make soup and ham and cheese toasties tonight for dinner. Um, we have like a big loaf of fresh bread, and um, I'm really excited because we haven't made vegetable soup in a really long time. I got to this bit in the book yesterday where I <laughs> actually like happy teared up when I was writing, and I didn't expect myself to have that reaction. There are bits of the story where I've had certain reactions, and I sit there and I question like if someone else read this book, if someone else hadn't spent the amount of time with these characters that I've spent with these characters, would they have the same response? And I honestly don't know. And I'm not gonna know that until I've like given the book to people to read. But I was I was writing this little bit yesterday. I'm not gonna tell you what chapter it was in. I go back and forth and I edit little bits of different chapters. I'm on chapter 26 now, but I have been flipping back and forth. But there was this one bit where I was writing and this important thing happened and it made me really, really happy. And I just got a bit teary. And maybe it's because I wasn't like feeling 100% and my head was hurt and I, it was a bit of a grump yesterday but yeah that was really it was really nice because I was like oh look how look how real these characters feel at least to me right because like when I'm writing a story when I'm writing the side of a story no there's a jalapeno there we don't want you that's too spicy too damn spicy for today goodbye to you when I'm writing the early bits of a story I haven't gotten to know the characters yet they don't feel real to me either like they don't feel fleshed out and I'm like super duper picky about characters feeling real in books like I'm definitely like a character Reader, if a book has kind of subpar world building and kind of like a not super engaging plot, but if the characters are really believable, I'll still enjoy the book. However, if the plot is like serviceable and the world building is amazing, but the characters feel hollow, I won't enjoy the book. So for me, it's like really important to latch on to the characters in the story and to make them feel really real. So I'm like hyper aware of trying to do this, but just because that's what I value as a reader doesn't mean I have the skill set to do that as a writer. I really hope that when people read the story, or at least when Tyler reads the story in a few weeks, I hope that that translates. I'm gonna finish eating this pizza and then probably get some noodles. I'm gonna buckle down for a bit more work and then I'll check back in with you guys later. It is now the afternoon. I've been making slow progress on chapter 26 of Project Teacup and it's, it's, it, I, this is the only chapter I'm gonna work on today, I think. This is, this is one of those bigger chapters that's not annoying, but like, it's, it's a lot of work to edit. So earlier in the week, I put out a ask on Instagram stories to see if anyone had any questions for like a writing related Q&A, because I sort of had the inkling that I'd be wanting to film a Q&A soon. Did not know at the time how soon I would be doing this Q&A because obviously um, I wanted to do it in a Project Teacup vlog and I hadn't intended to do another Project Teacup vlog for a few weeks. So here we are. I'm going to be answering some of you guys' questions that you sent in over on Instagram, mostly related to writing. If you want to ever participate in Q&As in the future, I generally always do them on Instagram, so please feel free to check that out. Question number one. What is your least favourite trope in fiction? My least favourite trope, it mostly happens in fantasy, but it does happen in a lot of fiction. When there are no female characters, like at all, 
or when the few female characters that there are all hate each other for no reason or they also like don't have friends for no reason that like I I think there's no space for that anymore I think it's so frustrating and it's still consistent it's not really a story trope, but it's just, it's a cliche, it's a thing that happens a lot and it really annoys me. How do you develop characters? I'm not sure. So in terms of how I personally develop characters, as opposed to like, how does one develop characters? I sort of just feel my way, like so much of it is intangible and it's me trying to discover them as I go. Like I will plot out the story, but it's not until I'm writing the story that I develop those people and I learn about who they are and I find their voice and so much of it is just me trying to find what feels right, which is a really intangible answer, but that's how I've done it so far. <laughs> Have you read any good manga recently? I only read One Piece. I read it pretty consistently. I was up to date until a month ago and now I think I'm like a month behind, but the answer to that question is One Piece. How do you stay focused while writing? Do you rely on discipline or motivation? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a person who really struggles with concentration, like, on both ends of the spectrum. So there'll be days where I feel like I can't concentrate on anything for more than like 10 minutes at a time. And there'll be days where I can pick a task and I can concentrate for 10 hours at a time. So I'm, I'm quite changeable and it depends on how I'm going and if I'm in hyper-focus mode for something. If I'm having a really bad focus day, I'll generally use the Pomodoro technique. So I'll set a time off like 20 minutes, I'll work for 20 minutes and I'll get up from my computer and I'll go do something fun, like play a little video game or something. And then I'll come back to my computer for 20 minutes and I'll do that loop over and over again until I can concentrate concentrate fine. Generally it takes about an hour and a half for me to get into the flow of it. In terms of sitting down um, and you know writing for hours and hours and hours and sort of having the motivation to finish a story like that to concentrate for that length of time on something that big. It comes from really really loving writing and and really wanting to to write a story that people enjoy and really loving like these characters in this world that I've built so I suppose that's a bit of motivation but it is also discipline because writing is laborious it is hard work and it is very difficult. What do you use to inspire ideas or motivate you to write? So there are so many answers to this question. In terms of what inspires ideas, it's like everything. So earlier on this 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 example, have you heard of a band called Sleep Token? Like there was <laughs> at the beginning of this year, they released a song called The Summoning, and I swear to God this is relevant to the question. They released this song and I had heard of this band and I had listened to their music before because Tyler had liked them for quite a while. I never really got super into them, I thought they were good, but like I didn't really care. And then they released this song and I latched onto it and I hyper-focused on this band, I think, for a month. Um, and I think I listened to The Summoning itself like probably like <laughs> like 400 times. I'm really excited to find out at the end of the year when I see my YouTube music wrapped to see how many times I listen to it because that app doesn't show me how many times I've listened to a song which really really annoys me and every time they ask if I had feedback I type in please tell me how many times I've listened to each song. Back on task. During that period I got really really inspired to write the short story that I wrote a few weeks ago which is called Narcissus's Shroud which I am currently trying to get published. I wrote that story during the Neil Gaiman video and that story had been brewing for so many months. I was inspired by this painting that I had heard about and I was inspired by oh, so many different bits but it was like it took me listening to the summoning by Sleep Token to be like this is the last piece of the puzzle we can now write this story and so for me when I'm writing it's like I need to be a magpie I need to pick up shiny bits and shiny things and different ideas they need to all stick together um, in order for me to start work on something sorry if this teacup is overfilled and it's stressing anyone out how do you find the motivation to write almost every day so I don't write every single day. I don't write on the weekends because when it comes to the weekend, I'm generally super duper tired. I have a really <laughs> heavy workload and I don't like sitting here whinging about my workload because I'm I'm really, really privileged to have the job that I have to be self-employed. I worked very, very, very hard to get here and so much happier than I've ever been in a career sense. So I'm very, very grateful. However, in order to make this work, in order to, to do what I'm currently doing with content production and writing and all this other creative stuff, I kind of work like 50 to 60 hours a week, depending. Like it's, it's a really significant workload and I try not to show that too much because I don't want to encourage anyone else to overwork. I don't want to encourage anyone else to work insane hours. And so I, I put a lot of thought into this, like into how much of that I share because I don't want to encourage people to work long hours. However, I have self-published a book. I have published stories 
and nonfiction articles, I do earn money from my writing, and so it's a fundamental part of my job, but it's a very, very small part of my income. And so in order to like make a living and, and pay my rent, I need to do the bulk of my work, which is content production, right? YouTube is a very time intensive job, like running a Patreon, managing a Discord server, like producing all this content, doing all this stuff. It takes many, 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 many hours. Every video takes like 15, 20 hours to make. Like if I'm doing Patreon videos, that's multiple videos for me to produce per week. For me, in order to make it work, <laughs> I write probably three, three or four days a week, generally. Generally, I'll have like one day a week, which is like my dedicated writing day. And even then I'll do admin, I'll do Patreon work on that day. So for me, in terms of finding the motivation to write, you know, three days a week, four days a week. It's because it is a part of my job, albeit financially a small part of my job. And I'm motivated to do it because it is my work, because it is my living and my income and my goals and my career. And I desperately want to have a novel published one day. When I was working a nine to five and on top of the nine to five, I was doing my masters and I was like doing a YouTube channel and I was publishing nonfiction articles and I had this like bullshit insane workload that I had for a few years. I did still write every single day. I did still work on my first novel that I wrote every single day. And I used to get up at 5 a.m in order to do that and honestly the way I motivated myself to do that was just purely by the fact that I really really want to publish a novel. Working remotely together with your partner at home tips. So if you guys have watched my last few vlogs you will know that Tyler recently became self-employed. He's now independently developing his own games. He's a game developer. I'm so proud of him. I'm so excited for him. He's working on this really cool game. It's about farming in space and it's very cool and I really like it and very excited for him. However but what comes along with that is the fact that we are now both working from home in this very, very tiny, tiny, tiny apartment. It's not that tiny, but on days where it's really, really hot outside, it's all glass, the air conditioning, and just the, the climate control in here is very, very bad. So it's not the most comfortable of space, but Tyler and I have worked in close proximity to each other for a really long time. We lived in Tokyo together in an apartment that was like 21 square meters. I think if you're two people who are really communicative and you're respectful with each other's time and space, you can make it work just fine. So if I'm in a really important part of the story, like I need to concentrate, it's really like emotionally charged and, and it's like a lot of hard work and I, I would really struggle if my concentration get broken, would get broken, I can't words. My, my brain's not firing on all cylinders. I will go to Tyler and say, hey, I need to concentrate for a little bit. Please don't interrupt me with anything. I think basically that communication is really important and also just generally getting out of the house still, like making sure that you're taking time to make sure you leave the house every day. Are you working with an agent? No, not yet. I'm all by myself. Um, I will start the querying process, hopefully in the next few months when the story is done, I'll start submitting it to agents, but no, otherwise I'm not working with anyone. If you could meet a writer, who would it be? Neil Gaiman, like of the living writers, it would be Neil Gaiman and here's the thing I've already met him like I would actively choose to meet Neil Gaiman again rather than meet anyone else I think I I love him he's so wonderful he was so kind to me and I realized after I uploaded that Neil Gaiman writing routine video that I, I uploaded that whole video and never mentioned that I met him and he was like really really lovely and really kind the answer is Neil Gaiman uh, of the writers I love who are not living, it would be Angela Carter or Virginia Woolf. And then the last question, because I think we've been filming for a really long time. Are you nervous about publishing Project Teacup? What's the one thing you're nervous about publishing or releasing Project Teacup? I love your question. I think this is a really wonderful question. I find the phrasing really interesting. The thing I'm most nervous for is it not getting published at all. I am really, really nervous that I've spent three years, I say I've, I've spent three years on it, but like I wrote and published a year in Tokyo in that time. You know, I, I worked on this channel, I, I worked full time, there's been so many other things I've been doing, it's just as far as my writing is concerned, this is what I've been doing for the last three years. So it's it's a small it's a small chunk of what I've been doing, but it, it has been three years of me like working on this on and off and really buckling down on it over the course of the last year. I'm nervous that I've put my heart and soul into this thing that is never gonna see the light of day. And the thing is that that is just the nature of publishing. Like that, that is part and parcel of this industry. And I know what it feels like now to have worked on a story for a really, really long time, to love that story, to submit it to agents, to get a few requests, and then to have it absolutely rejected by everyone. Cause that's what happened with the first novel I wrote. I worked on that novel for like, 
on and off but between the inception of the idea and me saying this is this is not gonna get published it was about eight years of my life like I came up with the idea for the novel when I was like 16 years old and so I was really emotionally attached to that book and when it didn't get published it was <laughs> Oh, it wasn't a very good time. I cried a lot. I cried so much. I was really, and like, I knew, I knew that this was a part of the process. I knew rejection was a part of the process. I didn't feel entitled to publication at all. I'm glad that everything worked out as it did. I, I, you know, I have a lot of space from that story now. I can see that it wasn't good enough. I can see that the idea wasn't interesting enough or unique enough. And I really hope that I've solved all of those problems with this story I'm currently working on. However, there is that lingering fear of, what if this book doesn't get published like it's 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 this really like sad scary idea and it's kind of like if it doesn't get published I'll just write the next one I'll just write the one after that like I'll I'll have my time I'll have a little bit of a cry and then I'll move on to the next story right because that is just the nature of this industry and I love writing and even if I knew I was never going to publish a novel I would still be writing novels because it's what I love the most in this world like I mean that really really genuinely. That's, that is what I'm the most scared of. In terms of like the book being released into the world, like a, as a traditionally published book, it's like my, my, my goal's been, been achieved. If someone buys a book from me <laughs> in, in, in like a future scenario, if someone buys a novel from me and then they hate it, like it's already been a fair exchange because they've bought the book, right? Like if you buy a book, you have every right to hate it. You have every right to not enjoy that story. And so I'm kind of not worried about that thing because it's like, well, at least I have a story out in the world. If people hate it, then that's just, that happens. Like it's, I can't control that. Yeah, that's, that, that's where my brain is with those questions. Thank you for listening to the Q&A section of this video. Let's go back to writing Project Teacup. Um, and then I'm going to quickly write a script for this for the review and analysis of this book this is emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies this is the book we read for the month of march over on patreon for the month of april we're going to be reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow i'm really excited to read that book because i've heard amazing things about it anyway we're going to go do some writing so let's go do that Dinner was so good. Like the, the bread that we got was like A plus bread. That was a very good cozy dinner and the perfect thing to have whilst feeling a bit poorly. So I'm currently reading uh, Orlando by Virginia Woolf. This is a reread for me. The first time I read it, I think it was like 2017. I think I was on a plane to Beijing. The first time I read it, I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure it was either Beijing or South Korea, but I love this book. I think it's absolutely brilliant and I'm rereading it. Today was a great, great writing day. My good mood has lasted the whole way through the day, mostly because I do feel the last of um, the sinus infection going away. Like I I've got more energy now, right now than I had this morning, which is really wonderful. <laughs> chapter 27 is mostly, no, sorry, chapter 26. I mean, 
mean, it's mostly done. I'm on to chapter 27. I think I removed around 600 words from that chapter. Chapter 26, I think this morning was like 4,000 words, which is on the bigger end for me. I think it's down to 3,200. So that's really, really good. I'm happy with that. Thank you guys so, so incredibly much for watching this video. Thank you for bearing with me while I have a very, very laid back writing vlog. This wasn't the video I wanted to make this week, but it is the video I was able to make this week. So this is what we have. And also an enormous thank you to everyone <coughs> I almost got through it. Thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel. Over there we have a whole bunch of lovely bonus content, bespoke videos that I make for people depending on what they request. We have our book club, we have a Discord server, we have all of these lovely things. Next month we're going to be reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow as our book club book. And yeah, if you want to support my channel or if you want more content from me, please feel free to click on the link in the description down below and check out Patreon. Um, take care guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.